Hello amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. I've created an API that emulates a SQL injection, so let's get right into it, shall we? For this API, I really wanted to use this API for SQL injection because a Flask website is so easy to set up. It's so quick. Uh, we're going to go through the source code as well, but first of all, the challenge, because some of you have been asking me, okay, login system, how do I crash this bug, this um, API? How do I fight the vulnerability, Uncle Rat? Because I really want that flag. Um, and some of you have been breaking your heads over it, so I decided to make a quick video about it. In this API, and in any API, whenever you're logging to this like a system, it really doesn't hurt to just enter a single quote into all of the fields. Just a single quote. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't take a lot of time. It's really fast, and if I do that, I might get something like SQL errors and valid queries. So that gives me an idea. So the first thing I'm going to try is what I've always tried on SQL injections, and that's what I learned as the first thing, is basically this one, uh, or one equals one. So I'm going to try it in all the fields, which is going to, for this case, it's going to say it doesn't work. Now, the reason this doesn't work is because I do need a specific admin username. And if we look at the code, as you can see, I've created some, so let's say, uh, let's call it, um, we shall call it some cheats in here. Now, um, the name itself, the name cheesy admins, this is the specific username that you had to use. You could find it actually in the source code. So you had to view the source code of this challenge. Um, I'm not in this login. I am in actually login systems or something like that. There we go. So I can just inspect the here. And then I can see that there's some, some comments in here, some hidden fields that's going to be important for the username. Um, if I get the diff open correctly. Um, there we go. So that's not it. Let's just click here. This is something very useful as well. I can show you for the developer console. You can click this and then you can select a specific element in your list and you will automatically go to your source code. Of course, I was an idiot. It was going downwards. It should have gone up. So as you can see, there's a hidden field in here. And as you can see, placeholder, cheesy admins, hidden user, cheesy admins. So of course you're going to have to try that now. That's one of the tricks that I've tried to put in and that's not in here, that's going to be in the template. Now we'll get back on that later. First of all, we're going to look at how the API is built up. So you have this route jumbled mess and that's going to return your flag. But to get there, you of course need to know that specific API endpoint and it's not really easily guessable in this point, or at least I tried to make it not easily guessable. Good job if you guessed it. You should go play the lottery, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, for the login, I also created a route, a specific route, and that also accepts get and post methods because, of course, if I just show here, if I just open the page, I need to um, execute the get method, but if I um, post my form, I do need to get that post HTTP method. So uh, that's basically like all of the methods that I need. Don't need any other like delete for now. Don't need anything like put. So we're going to put that off. Uh, <laughs> so I also put an empty error in here. And as you can see this specific error, it's going to get emptied every time because otherwise I, I couldn't get the correct error in there with SQL injection and all that stuff. Uh, we'll get more into that later. First of all, it's going to check if the request method is a post method. In that case, it's going to actually render this here, and it's going to try if there's a single quote in the password. It's going to add to the error that there's a SQL error invalid query. Now the BR of the say it doesn't work. Uh, so we might need to adjust that later on and might need to put in a new line or a carriage return feed. Um, but that's not important for now because in the next step here, if request, oh, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, of course, because that's going to be a little bit easier to read. There we go. Uh, in the next one, we can see here that if request.form username, so if the username equals cheesy admins, 
And again, we could have found that in the source code. We'll go look at that later. And of course, we need to have this in the password or request for it. So this specific thing here needs to be in the password, but I'm putting it to lowercase as well because I don't want people putting in uppercase ors and not getting it. I, I just want it to be a basic challenge for this and not too, not too intensive basically. So if all of this is true, it's going to redirect us. It's going to redirect us to the flag. That's what we want. Um, but otherwise it's going to say invalid credentials and please try again. Now it's always going to render this template login.html and it's going to show the error that's available. It's going to run on my loopback IP address and it's going to run on port 5007 on my VPS. So what happens when I actually, um, when I actually, let's go back here. So in Flask, you can use what's known as templates and they're really cool. We'll look at one of those templates real quick because I think they're really interesting. They're basically always in the same folder as your um, your your login system.py in my case. So as the specific Python file that you're going to run in that folder, you're going to also need to put a templates folder. And in there, you're, you can find all of these templates, of course, and you can easily reference them. I've only got one in here right now, and that's the one we reference as well. And as you can see, this is what we mean by there's an error in here. It's really easy to fill this up. Um, but this is how the server side templating engines can occur. For example, if this user error would be controllable, that might trigger a server side template injection. So um, that's it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope it was educational to you and I hope I will see you in my next video. Bye, amazing hackers.